Welcome to the True Core Crew podcast, where we discuss everything health and fitness, giving you the tools and tips to not only build, but live your best life, body, mind, and spirit. Thanks for joining us. Happy Friday, world. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Whenever you are listening to this, my name is Shannon Logan, and I'm the owner of True Core in Annapolis, Maryland. And it might have been a hot second, but I am back with my wonderful client success manager, Miss Aline Wetzel. Good afternoon, Aline. Hello. How are you today? I am spectacular. How has your last couple of weeks been with Halloween? Uh fabulous good good did you eat all the candies i don't eat the candies oh did you freeze all the candies no addy and billy <laughs> addy and billy it's so cute because she he was like you think addy will give me some candy and i was like yeah absolutely and he asked you're gonna have to share your candy she said no and then every day she brings him out a piece of candy oh that's sweet Super sweet. someone must have taught her some good sharing skills now, if you can come teach my daughter, Cora, my 21-month-old, those skills, I would appreciate it. <laughs> it comes. It comes, I promise. It took 13 years to get that. Yeah, right. Exactly. We're, <laughs> we're in it for the long haul. Yes. So um, we have a unique little session today. We're going to do basically, I'm on, I'm, I'm on the hot seat. Q&A. Q, Q&A with me. So um, one day we'll go into my, my story because the last time we spoke, it was your story. Um, but I wanted to kind of answer some questions that people might have um, out and about in the world. So I put it up on Facebook yesterday. We got a couple good um, mm-hmm. requests in there. Juicy or questions. questions. Dun, dun, dun. Scared. So we're just going to kind of walk, walk through them and see and see what comes. Just so the world knows, I haven't prepared. So uh, they started coming in, in <laughs> yesterday afternoon, but I was at work till, I don't know, six o'clock last night or something like that. And then yes, had my toddler. And then I had some work to do after she, she went to bed. And then I eventually went to bed and the sun came up this morning. And we've been going running since. Nonstop. So whatever comes out, it's my Hopefully authentic it's self. Hopefully it's accurate and true. It's my authentic <laughs> self. <laughs> well, let's start at the top. What we got, Miss, Miss Aline? What's the first All one we have? All right. Our friend, Casey. Would hey, like- Casey would like shout out Casey. Hey, Casey is very curious how you manage to remain so consistent and committed to your health diet and life in general as a new mom. Uh, She's in all of your discipline and she fears that she may have lost her willpower and motivation. So um, help her, (laughs) please. Sure. So uh, a little bit about me. So what was the exact wording? My diet, my How do you manage to remain so consistent to health, diet, work, and life in general? Yeah. Um, So I think a lot of that comes down to if I don't, then who? Right? Like if I don't do certain things, then who will? Mm. Um, At the same time, a little bit about me, I have always been active. Like I started and organized sports at age four. Um, and I was a, a, I was a three season athlete um, all the way through high school. Um, and then I played college sports. So for me, being active is just how I kind of self care. Um, if I'm not active, I get grouchy. I get more stressed. I get more tired. Um, I get more anxious. And so I, as an individual, prioritize some sort of daily movement five to six days a week because I'm better for everyone, including myself when I do it. Um, I've also been blessed with an amazing daughter who, while she's a toddler, uh, we did some sleep training early on with an amazing company called Sleepwise. I would highly, highly, highly recommend them to anyone who has a kid that struggles with sleep. They work with adults too. My husband worked with them too. So um, long story short, she's, she's a great sleeper. Um, she, and she's just a great kid. And 
she has joined me for my workouts literally since day one, besides the fact that she was in, in belly. Um, <laughs> I, when she came out, I had a really, uh, complicated labor and delivery. So I couldn't work out for like nine weeks. Um, I didn't want to work out for the first month, but then I started getting a little antsy. So she has literally been working out with me in some capacity ever since I could, um, whether she was taking a nap beside me or in a play container or something. So every day, that's just our routine. Um, I, I thrive with a, a routine. So I get up the same time every day. It doesn't matter if it's a weekend or not. I go to bed pretty much the same time every day. Um, I work out generally about the same time every day because it's dependent on my daughter's schedule and because I take care of her full time. Um, that runs my life. And so she thrives really well with a, a, a schedule. I do really well with a schedule. And so it kind of helps us stay on track. Um, I do workouts during her snack time. So she's bribed with food every time as well. So that helps like delay her need for me or her perceived need for me. Um, that's just how, how it is. And if I, for some reason, some reason aren't going to do it around snack time then we're in a new environment so she's like intrigued like i take her outside so she can play in the leaves or or something so that she's got some kind of entertainment that's not just mom um so for me as an individual i am better when i am structured um i'm happier i'm more content um i keep the important things at the top because I've gotten to a point in, in my life where when I let those things start to slide, um, I feel it. I feel it physically. I feel it emotionally. I feel it mentally. Um, and those three, th- three things are really my faith, my family, and then what I feel like my, my purpose is in this world. Um, and when I keep those things at the forefront and I feel everything else around them, things just kind of of work out. So I've been blessed because I've been in some kind of a structured routine when it comes to exercise for a long time. Um, But just like everyone else, I am not perfect. I have days and weeks and months where um, I can be on one extreme or the opposite. Interesting enough, during COVID, I actually, it was really hard for me to keep active because I took a business where we had 175 people in person and we went completely virtual in 48 hours. And then I was working 12 to 14 hours a day on a screen, which you take a gym owner that's used to having 18,000 steps a day and put her in front of a computer screen. Um, I, I didn't move. And so I, I went through a process in, in, in COVID where I was like, I have to set a boundary at some point every day to turn the screens off and to get away from them and to move my body because I was starting to get depressed. I, my anxiety was really high. Um, I was sluggish. I just, I didn't feel good. So I have just failed or stumbled or falled, fell, fell in. Uh-huh. <laughs> Is it time for my afternoon coffee yet? Yes. Um, enough times to know that if I don't keep those things kind of front and center, that I start, I start to feel crappy and that's crappy mentally, emotionally, and physically. So don't overcomplicate it. Don't go for perfection. Go for one small step this week, this week, not today, like this week, this week, I'm going to go for a walk every day for 20 minutes for 10 minutes. And then next week add on five minutes. And then the week after that, I'm going to try to prep breakfast on Sunday. So I know what I'm going to have each day. Take small steps a week at a time. So you don't feel overwhelmed because it's really easy to get that way. All right. I think I rambled on that one. That Sorry, good. Casey. It was, it was helpful. I believe. Hope so. Yeah. Um, Colleen, this is mm. a good question. A great question. Um, there's a perception out there about gyms. What would you say to people who let gyms or the idea of going to the gym intimidate them? So that has a two part um, answer in my perception. So I'm going to go with what being intimidated by a certain gym. So um, in regards to that, do some research, right? Like if a certain gym, if you're talking about a 
specific entity, specific brick and mortar, um, do some research in terms of social media, maybe stop by, walk through it, um, look at if you know anyone who attends there and talk to them, um, start to make it more tangible than, than just this idea out there of this entity that you aren't attached to at all um, and start to put some char- characteristics on it that you would like to see, right? So just thinking about if I join a gym, fitness facility, club, group of m- moms that want to hang out without their kids on, on the weekends, like what am I looking for? Am I looking for a certain time frame? Am I looking for um, a welcoming spirit? If I am, what does that entail? Does that entail men and women? Does it entail women? Um, and start to put some some characteristics on that in terms of it's not just something outside side of you that you're trying to identify. Think about what would make you comfortable in that space, and then do the, the, um, the, the research and see if it kind of lines up. Now, the second half of that question was gyms in general. What, what, what was the second half of that question? Let me reread it again. There's a perception out there about gyms. What would you say to people who let gyms or the idea of going to the gym intimidate them? Mm. So yeah, if it's a specific gym, like I said, do the research. Second, the idea, um, Put tangibles on that again. So brainstorm a little bit about it. I do really well when I write things out. Um, if I keep everything in my head, it it tends to get foggy and complicated, and I tend to go around the same circle over and over again. So get out a piece of paper and a pen and say, I feel in- intimidated by the gym or a gym or the thought of a gym because, and then start to list out what that might be. Um, self-comparison, odd looks, getting hurt, um, standing out in, you know, a positive way or a negative way, start to list out what it is because it's going to be much more, unfortunately, it's going to be much more about you as a person than it is about the idea of a gym. And then with that, make sure you find some place that you feel like understands those things and can embrace you for those things. Because to be frank, like at TrueCore, we tend to train a lot of people with the CrossFit methodology and we have a CrossFit affiliation. And I get so many people, new, new clients coming in that are like, I don't want to join a, a <laughs> CrossFit gym. Yeah. Never mind. Um, and I say, Hey, just give us a week or two, you know, let's, I'll, I'll refund it if, it if things go south, but you're intimidated or you're fearful of what CrossFit in your mind is. Let's see if that's actually real in this environment, because it might be, or it could be false here. Um, so starting to list out what specifically intimidates you and the thought of a gym and then if there's a- anything on that from an action step that you can take when you go to look at gyms to know that, oh, I'm going to feel supported. I'm not going to be judged. I'm going to be known as an individual and not a number. Like that's something that we're really um, pa- pa- passionate about on TrueCore. Like we're not a numbers game, right? Like I want to know you for you and why you're here. So I ho- hope that helps, Colleen. Yeah, I would just like to add to, to yes, back please. on that, that one, of, one of our clients uh, came in the very first day. She had a hat on. She was very um, just hunched over because it was during the 430 class and and it was intimidating. And I was like, are you OK? And she was like, I don't know. There's a lot of people here. And I literally said to her, no, nobody's worried about you. <laughs> In a kind way. Oh, yes. I was like, really, like everybody's here to to help themselves, you know, mm-hmm. which of course truly is a, is a no judgment zone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you come in and you do your not own. the way Planet Fitness is, though. We no. Don't. no, 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 no. <laughs> and then halfway through our first session, I was like, how are you feeling? 
you feel like you know anybody's like staring at you she's like no no one no one cares (laughs) yeah you're we're all there just to to better ourselves and to not judge others it really is a it's a it's a great environment and i think it's important to to find that depending on what your goals are right so it, if you're someone that wants to go into the gym put head headphones in and just do do your own thing yeah. make sure you find a gym that supports that um if you're someone that is a little uneasy uncomfortable overwhelmed at thought of like having to make another decision to figure out what the hell i should do today when i work out then make sure you find a gym that supports that and meets you where you're at to help you walk through that and still succeed um but both those those things are based off of and dependent on you recognizing what you as individual need and what makes you feel most comfortable and safe. Absolutely. Hope that's helpful. Com- we want you to feel comfortable and safe. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's just not at the gym, but in general, comfortable and safe. Uh, and our buddy Scott. What's up, Scott? Good question. What's the most important thing to do to keep weight off forever instead of just gaining and losing the same 20, 10, 20 pounds over and over again? This is a fantastic question because I have clients, I have members that actually struggle with this exact same thing. And they've been group class members with me for a long time and they still kind of go up and down and they'll be you know, they feel great. They feel lean. They feel strong. And then something happens or they stop walking the path they were on and they put on the weight back on uh, cycles. Um, so this kind of speaks to my real focus and, and, and passion since COVID happened was through that process, it became very clear how many people do not have any kind of self-care in place on a daily basis, right? Like, what do you do from day to day to feed your own soul and to recharge yourself? Hate to break it to you, but spending time on social media and Instagram <laughs> and Netflix does not recharge you. What? Um, I know it, it's it very, it might feel like it is, but neurologically, if you look at brain activity, it's actually sucking that from you. Um, when you scroll through social media, it's the same part part of your brain that is working when you're trying to do emails, while you're trying to do budget reports, while you're actually working for a living, it's the exact same part of your brain. So when you scroll, you're not actually having a break, you're just making yourself more fatigued. But I digress. Um, Scott's question was, how the hell do you keep it off for the rest of your life, pretty much? And that's the answer to that is you got to pick figure out why you put it on in the first place or why you keep putting it on on the first place. Um, And so that's why since COVID, I've become very passionate about taking a whole holistic approach to our our clients and looking at their real deep reasons why they want to be here in the first place. Um, We have an iceberg that we've gone off of. I did a video a couple of weeks ago about it. And the base of that iceberg, like, the, the, the peak is where we all want to be, our transformation, our beach bodies, you know, our health long term. But there's so much under the peak that people don't pay attention to and the base being mindset. And so you, you got to spend some time. And my recommendation is not on your own, getting <laughs> some help, getting some coaching, getting some guidance into exploring why it keeps coming back. Um, you might logically and even emotionally know why, but if it keeps coming back, you're not empowered enough yet to make real change on your own, or you would have done it by now. So it's totally okay to get some help. I get help from a variety of people every week, every day in some regards for things that I need to work on or grow on or improve on. Um, and that way you have a you have someone in your corner walking you through the bad days where you want to quit and they're going to be like mm, I know you want to quit you don't need to quit you may not believe in yourself yet but I be- believe in you and you're we're going to walk you through this phase similar to what we do in our health mentorship and so when you spend time digging into why you keep 
kind of yo-yoing. You have someone objective walking that journey with you to hold you accountable. Then you can make lasting change and really keep whatever weight you keep cycling on and off, off. And more, more importantly, feel good about yourself. Because every single client I talk to that yo-yos back and forth, it makes them feel like crap about themselves. You know, it, it has as, as much of a um, mental, negative. a mental, negative. like, mm-hmm. absolutely on, on their psyche as it does on their body. And so, like, they, they need to be, be, be shown that someone believes that they can make that change. They need to have the change, walk through the process of having that change and then kind of checked in on to make sure it stays for a, a while so they can lock in those routines that really help. So long story short, spend some time reflecting on why it keeps happening. Get a coach, get an accountability partner, get a guy, get a mentor um, to walk you through some things that can help you break that cycle and then stick a- around with you for a while after so that when you hit a rough patch, you don't revert back to what has happened five, 10, 20 times beforehand. Right. Yeah. We absolutely. see that a lot. Yeah. We see, we see that a lot. Mm-hmm. You need you and me. No. <laughs> well, that's true. That is a hundred percent true. Oh, well. But I mean, I, it's, it's, it's normal. No, oh, yeah. like, it's normal. It's life. It's life. Mm-hmm. Um, but people, we have this concept that we should be completely self-sufficient. We're not meant to live alone. We're not no. meant to exist alone. Community. Community. Um, Aline, do you have anything to add to the stuff that I've mentioned so far? On, no, on three I, think I think you did an amazing job with this Q and A. This is a, this was awesome. I think this is a, um, a, a different, you know, format for us. And I think it was probably helpful to the people that asked the question. So I hope so. Good job. And if anyone has requests, feel free to uh, email them Shannon at, to me, Shannon at truecorecoaching.com. You can mention me on Facebook, Shannon Logan or Instagram. Um, you can comment on this video below if there's something that you, you want to hear about next time. We try to go live every two weeks or so to give you guys um, some good content and some helpful, hopefully, ad- ad- advice that's worth your time. Yeah. So. Uh, and, and then to add before we wrap up, Ali. It'll be a, it's supposed to be a really nice weekend. I hope you have a spectacular weekend, guys. Every, everyone too. have a spectacular weekend, even if you listen to this six months later. Oh, right, right, right. Well, whenever your weekend is Wednesday. happening, <laughs> whenever your weekend is happening, having a having have a spectacular one. Yes, please. All right. Take care, everyone. Thank you for your time. We'll see you real you. soon. Thanks so much for joining us today. Interested in learning more? Join our free Facebook group, Annapolis Health, Fitness, Nutrition, and Mindset, where we give out resources every week and even have live trainings on helping you live your best life. Hope to see you there.